So in this video, we're going to have a look at destructive plate boundaries and consider some of the processes and landforms that we find in each of the three settings that can um, make up a destructive plate boundary. Um, the most familiar type um, of destructive boundary that you most probably have come across before um, is where we have oceanic and continental crust or oceanic and continental lithosphere um, meeting one another. In order to understand what happens here, it's really important that we remember the different properties of oceanic lithosphere compared to continental lithosphere. Now, although the oceanic lithosphere is thinner, um, it is actually denser. Um, and those heavier properties mean that when it collides with the continental crust, the oceanic crust will be subducted. And we can see that happening here um, as that plate descends beneath the other um, and starts to sink into the asthenosphere and the mantle below it. Um, that is being driven by the density of the oceanic lithosphere in comparison to the continental lithosphere. And while it's on its way down, a number of processes are going to be happening which are going to contribute to the presence of hazards and to the creation of landforms at this boundary. Um, along the dividing line between the two plates, so we imagine this section here, just draw a little zigzag line on there, um, along that section there is where we are going to have an immense amount of friction building up uh, between the plates. Um, those plates are going to get locked and snagged and they're going to be rubbing against one another and that friction generates enormous amounts of heat and pressure. We call this area the Benioff zone. Um, it's an area where we also find um, lots of earthquake activity because that's where all those frictional forces are being created. And it's also where the upper part of the oceanic plate um, or oceanic lithosphere begins to melt. Um, the whole plate doesn't melt and disappear. We can see that it carries on descending down into the mantle and doesn't melt completely until it's at a much greater depth. But the surface of that plate will begin to melt. Um, the molten rock or magma that is created um, will rise towards the surface can see that happening on this diagram. Um, it might collect in the magma chamber of volcanoes and then be released in um, a volcanic eruption. So volcanoes and earthquakes um, are present at this type of plate boundary. Another feature that we find running parallel to the plate boundary um, is an ocean trench. This is a deeper section of the ocean um, formed as the oceanic lithosphere dives away beneath the continental lithosphere. Um, it creates a narrow V-shaped depression on the sea floor. It's a bit hidden by um, this uh, feature on the diagram here, but we can imagine that actually um, the ocean floor is actually diving away down um, to a greater depth as it starts to meet the continental crust. So we have an ocean trench forming along this boundary, um, running parallel to it all the way um, along the point where those two plates are meeting. It's important we understand what's happening to the continental crust as well. So the continental crust is moving in this direction um, from right to left on this diagram. Um, and therefore, where it collides with the oceanic crust, it's stopping moving um, at this point, but is continuing to move in from the right. So we end up with some compression happening where this continental crust is squeezed together. Um, and a bit like maybe when a, a car crashes into a wall and the bonnet crumples upwards um, and gets all ridged and folded, that's exactly what's happening very, very slowly to this continental crust. So what we find running along, again, parallel to the plate boundary, but within the continental crust, is a series of mountains, fold mountains, um, some of which will be volcanoes because of that process of melting that's happening underneath. So we refer to this um, chain of mountains, some of which are, are volcanoes, we refer to this as a volcanic arc. 
Um, I'm going to show you now a little animation of this process. So, if we have a look here at what's happening on this, uh, this diagram, um, we can see that if I press play, we can see the subducting oceanic plate sinking beneath the continental crust. We can see um, that the upper part of that plate is melting. We can see that magma is rising upwards um, and it's escaping um, in volcanic eruptions um, over here. So this process takes an incredibly long time um, to happen because those plates are moving very, very slowly. Um, but it's leading to the presence of um, volcanic activity and also earthquakes um, along this type of, of boundary. Now, if we were to consider um, a located example of this type of plate boundary, the Andes in South America is a really, really good example to, to hold in your mind. So um, in South America, we have two plates colliding. We have the South American plate, um, which would be here, and we have the Nazca plate, which is here. Um, the plate boundary literally runs down the coast of South America like this. So the Nazca plate is moving in this direction and the South American plate is moving in this direction. Oceanic and continental lithosphere meeting one another. As a result of that, we get an ocean trench developing down that plate boundary. In this case, the Peru-Chile trench runs right the way down the coasts um, of those two countries. It's up to 4,000 meters deep. We've got a very long chain of mountains, the Andes Mountains running down the length of South America, 7,000 kilometers long um, and averaging 4,000 meters high. Some of those mountains are volcanoes. Two notable volcanoes are Nevada del Rui um, and Chieten. Um, and this has been home to actually some of the largest earthquakes um, ever recorded um, in Chile in 1960. Um, it was a magnitude nine 0.6 earthquake that happened in um, in Chile in 1960. Um, more recently, um, big earthquakes, Chile in 2015, a magnitude 8, um, and in Ecuador in 2016 as well, um, a magnitude 7.8. So those forces that are building up beneath this destructive plate boundary can generate very large magnitude earthquakes. Um, the other thing to understand as well about the eruptions of the volcanoes like Nevada del Rui and Chaitan, they tend to be very explosive because of the um, andesitic magma that is created as a result of that subduction. Now, the second type of destructive plate boundary um, shares many similarities with that first type, but there are slightly different um, things going on here. Um, what we have in this situation is um, a destructive boundary where we have two bits of oceanic lithosphere. So rather than one of these bits of um, lithosphere being continental, um, both of these plates, both of these bits of lithosphere here um, are oceanic crust. Um, what that means is we have to think a little bit more carefully about which one is going to get subducted. When oceanic and continental crust meet one another, it's quite easy to understand that the oceanic plate will be subducted because it's heavier, more dense than the continental crust. When we've got two bits of oceanic crust, um, there will still always be one that is more dense than the other. Uh, maybe because of its age um, and therefore uh, the older plate might be colder and therefore more dense. Um, there will always be one that subducts beneath the other. They don't both get subducted. Um, they don't both rise up. One will still subduct beneath the other. So in a similar way to what was happening in the Andes, we can see that subduction. Um, again, we would have um, a Benioff zone here um, of earthquakes along that plate uh, boundary where they are rubbing together. We'd have the melting of that plate creating magma that's rising upwards um, and escaping in the form of volcanic eruptions. Um, but the difference here is that rather than getting a chain of mountains, some of which are volcanoes, we get a chain of islands, also known as an island arc. Um, so these islands would run parallel to the plate boundary and they would experience volcanic activity um, as a result of that subduction happening beneath them. We also have an ocean trench that runs parallel to the plate boundary, just a little bit further offshore um, from the islands. Again, that trench has been formed by the subduction of 
one bit of oceanic crust beneath the other. So the same processes are happening here as an oceanic continental boundary. One plate sinks beneath the other. On the way down, it partially melts. It creates earthquakes through the friction and pressure. Um, but here we're getting a chain of islands known as an island arc rather than um, a chain of mountains and um, volcanic um, activity. I'm going to show you a little animation now of this, this process in action. So here we have one bit of oceanic lithosphere subducting beneath another bit of oceanic lithosphere. And we can see that as that oceanic lithosphere subducts, the upper part of that plate is melting. The magma that's created is rising upwards and it's escaping through um, the crust forming islands. These islands are going to build up from layer upon layer of lava over time. Um, and again, the volcanic activity um, along this type of boundary is going to be quite explosive. We can see we're also getting earthquakes happening as those plates are colliding um, and as they scrape past one another, all of the friction between those plates triggers earthquakes. Um, and indeed, the eruption and movement of that magma um, is going to create seismic activity as well. A good example to use for this type of plate boundary is what's happening in the Caribbean. Um, so in the Caribbean, we have a, a chain of islands, an island arc, um, with one plate on either side. Um, if we imagine the plate boundary is running um, around here, we have um, the North American plate at this point, and we have the Caribbean plate at this point, and they're moving towards one another um, in this direction. So as they collide with each other, um, the North American plate is being subducted beneath the Caribbean plate. It's melting. Um, it's creating an ocean trench, the Puerto Rico trench. It's creating an island arc known as the Lesser Antilles. That's the name that we give um, to this group of islands like Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis. We refer to this as the Lesser Antilles. Um, and there are a number of volcanoes dotted along here. Um, Chances Peak in Montserrat, for example, or Mount Pele in Martinique. Um, again, quite explosive eruptions from these volcanoes. Um, and we also get earthquakes happening along here. Um, Dominica in 2016 experienced um, quite a sizable earthquake as a result of the subduction um, of this plate. Now, the third type of destructive plate boundary is a little bit more complex and it's slightly different to the other two boundaries that we've just been looking at. Um, this involves where we have continental crust meeting continental crust. We have a collision boundary between two bits of continental lithosphere. Um, in order to understand this boundary, it's important to think about actually how those two bits of continental crust have ended up colliding in the first place. Um, we're going to refer to the example of the Himalayas for this um, setting because it's the best example um, of where this is happening currently. Um, and although at the moment there are two bits of continental lithosphere colliding um, underneath the Himalayas, Previously, and I'm talking millions of years ago, there would have been um, an ocean separating those two continents. So the situation in um, the Himalayas would have looked quite similar to what the Andes are like today. There would have been um, some oceanic lithosphere subducting beneath some continental lithosphere. Um, and you would have had fold mountains and volcanic activity um, and earthquakes taking place. But as we know, as that ocean crust subducts, it's pulling the rest of the plate along with it in that process of slab pull. And what it's doing is very slowly dragging this bit of continental lithosphere closer to this bit of continental lithosphere. So over time, that ocean is getting smaller and smaller until eventually there is actually no ocean left between them. Um, that ocean closes and the two bits of continental crust collide and um, the layers of rock on the ocean floor and the two bits of continental crust get forced upwards. In this scenario, if we think about the Himalayas in the past, um, again, talking maybe 70 million years ago, um, 
India didn't used to be joined to the rest of Asia. There was an ocean between the uh, between the two continents. Over time, that ocean has got smaller and smaller. The two continental plates have got closer together, and all of that material on the ocean floor has got squashed together. Um, helping to build that chain of mountains. This has happened very, very slowly, um, but then leads us to the situation that we're in here, where those two bits of continental crust are colliding, um, and it's forcing those mountains upwards. So um, Everest, for example, is actually still growing um, at a few millimetres every year. So this diagram here shows you that transition um, from um, the Indian landmass as being um, separate from the rest of the Eurasian plate to it colliding with um, the rest of the Eurasian plate. Um, we can think about that process that's happening in the ocean between those two continents um, as being illustrated by this simple diagram here. We've got a plate on either side of the ocean um, that's being slowly filled with sediment as rivers carry material into the sea and that gets compressed into layers of rock. And then as those plates move towards each other and that ocean gets smaller, we end up with those layers of rock um, being folded and forced upwards um, into uh, mountains, into what we call fold mountains. It's also important to remember about the characteristics of the continental crust. Now, because continental crust is less dense than oceanic crust and less dense than the mantle that it sits on, it can't be subducted. So when those two bits of continental crust collide with one another, they have nowhere else to go other than to be forced upwards and over the top of each other. And it's that forcing of the rock upwards and over the top of the um, other continental crust that triggers large earthquakes. So Nepal, for example, had a big earthquake back in 2015, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake. It was created by the collision of these two bits of continental crust. We don't get any volcanic activity at this boundary because there simply isn't any opportunity for that magma to reach the surface. There's no subduction, so we're not creating any more magma and there's no weaknesses created um, by the plates being pulled apart or stretched. So the continental crust is too thick to allow that magma to reach the surface. So hopefully that um, gives you a nice little summary of the three different types of destructive plate boundary. They are similar, but they do have differences that you need to be aware of um, in terms of their processes and their landforms, and you need to be able to tie each example um, to a particular place that that is happening um, on Earth.